we are live. Uh, welcome uh, to the return of Totally Unscripted. So Totally Unscripted is a Google Apps um, script community show. So uh, it's driven by members of the community. Uh, and um, I'm Martin Hoxie. I'm part of that community and uh, joined today by um, uh, James Ferreira. Uh, hi, James. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for well, having me. <laughs> it's we, we were hoping to have a couple of other people here, but uh, it's just me and James. So we're going to have a very focused and uh, hopefully coherent discussion. And today we're going to be doing uh, uh, a Google App Maker q &A. So we've had a Google Doc out for a while, and we picked up some questions around um, App Maker, and we've got the YouTube live chat. So if there's any that crops up during the show that you want to ask, um, we'll, we'll, um, we'll see if we can do our best to um, answer those questions. So James, we've actually had you on uh, the show before talking about App Maker when it was in um, uh, the kind of early access preview. Uh, and kind of the big change is it, the, the little baby is out in, into the world now. Uh, it's um, accessible, but we should say that there are some limitations on who has access to um, Google App Maker. Do you want to just go through those quickly? Yeah, yeah, it seems like forever ago. <laughs> I think it was, well, it released, what was it, 2016 in November, on November 30th. And I think we had a show like just a couple days after that or something like that. And, it, you know, and that was like, that seemed like it was forever ago. So it was in beta for a very, 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 or EAP, the early access program where you had to, you know, fill out the special forms and all that kind of stuff to get into it. And it was, uh, it was, you know, it was a long time coming. We thought it was never going to happen. <laughs> so, but finally, just as a couple of weeks ago, it's, you know, it's now out in the world. It's generally available to everybody who has. And so the, the, the only still remaining caveat to that is you have to have the business or enterprise version of, of G Suite or be an EDU client. So. Yeah. Uh, so all the EDUs are, are free to use AppMaker, which is really awesome. We've definitely been working with a lot of the different uh, big EDU partners like Amplified IT um, to, you know, to help a lot of their clients get up and running and that kind of thing. So we're super excited it's out. I mean, it's, it's great that people can actually start using this tool. Yes, uh, I think it's going to solve a lot of headaches for people in terms of you know, developing stuff and extending and what G Suite does for them. Um, so I kind of the very, if you're looking for equivalents, I, I was thinking about this and uh, back in the day, I used to um, make MS, MS Access forms and there's kind of elements of that in terms of visually being able to put together interfaces, but it goes a lot beyond that, doesn't it, James? Definitely. It's, it, it is the replacement for access for sure. Um, I mean, especially if you're moving from a Microsoft environment to uh, Google, like state of Arizona is kind of making that move. Um, we've had, we actually have that specific use case with the Texas government you know, here in Texas. We're in, we're in Austin um, and a uh, you know, little ATX on the wall and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> they, um, but here, uh, here are the uh, Texas government, they have access databases that they're like, what are we going to do with these things? We're going to Google or we're thinking about making a move to Google and, you know, we want to, you know, we want to put them online. And that's, that's kind of the big move. <clears throat> I mean, all businesses are doing that thing, same thing. It's like, well, we want it mobile. We wanted all those things, you know, and that's the cool thing about it is, is even going beyond what access was capable of. AppMaker is built on a MySQL database, Google Cloud SQL to be specific. And so you can just grow it and grow and grow it. And it's it's not something that's gonna slow down. It's not gonna get all boggy and that kind of thing. Cause the database structure is, is super solid. Uh, and it's industry standard. I mean, what 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 you know real enterprise app doesn't even you know, SQL database for the back end, right? So sure. it, it scales hugely, definitely a replacement for access, you know. So we're we're loving to see that. I, I think uh, the good news so uh, you know the, as, as well as, you know, a drag and drop UI designer, the, the, the good news for um, AppScript developers uh, is that the underlying, you know, code that that 
what what gets generated from the drag and drop or what you customize is all in Google Apps Script. So if you're familiar with Google Apps Script, you're already kind of quite far up the curve in terms of what you can do with with that maker. Um, but I suppose that leads to some of the questions we got. And um, uh, one of the first ones was, um, you know, what's the difference between app maker and um, HTML service? Um, is anything in particular you'd like to spotlight on that, James? Yeah, so, you know, coming from an app script background, <laughs> you know, writing some of the books, the O'Reilly books and things like that on it, um, you know, that's that was actually why I was so interested in app maker. I'm like, is you know, they, when Google originally talked to me about it, they're like, well, it's built on top of app script. I'm like, wow, this is great, something new, you know, so I got to check out that. And and it is indeed built, you know, essentially on top of app script. I don't know that that's the actual platform it runs in, but it creates app maker HTML files it is basically what it creates for the UI. Um, and you know where we had like long ago, and I know you remember where we had the the GUI builder, you know, and for those long time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it got deprecated for those of you that yeah. are looking the docs for it. Um, so it's not around anymore. But this is like light years ahead of that because it's not just it's not just there to build the UI for you. Well, it does do that only with drag and drop interface and all. It's, I mean, it's it's a, it's, a, its own package. AppMaker is its own. You know, it's appmaker.google.com. It's its own standalone piece. At the end of the day, yes, it does create uh, basically an HTML service uh, file. So when you run or deploy your app, it runs at script.google.com. So. Um, you know, it is running off that same HTML service. I imagine you could probably create all these, you know, that file yourself if you really tried really hard. Um, <laughs> but AppMaker just does that for you. So you really never touch UI components, which is amazing for apps. Because that was the hardest, that was the thing where we had the most trouble, right? Maintaining all that. And then, you know, I would write something, you know, for a UI that, you know, was that was running as a standalone and, and write that UI. And then I'd come back like a year later because I had to maintain it or something like that. And I'd be like, who wrote this garbage, <laughs> right? You know, the script is just terrible, you know? And I realized it was me, of course. And I have to go through and figure out what I was thinking when I did that and all that. Well, you know, AppMaker's doing all that structure for you. So all that crazy UI stuff that we've all had to deal with for years, AppMaker just, just handles it. And so you can actually just throw stuff together and make it work. I suppose some of the caveats on that is that, um, you know, for AppMaker, you're making full-blown applications. So the equivalence, uh, I suppose, would be if you were doing publishing as a web app and using HTML service. Obviously, there's still a place for HTML service with, you know, custom dialogues and so on actually within applications. Would that be correct? Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I don't, you can't use AppMaker inside a container like a document or something like that to do a pop up. Um, it pretty much is its own standalone type of service. You can use it in, in sites, you, know, you can embed it in sites, but it's, it's definitely meant to be more that application, you know, building an app that does something. I mean, it could be something really small, like maybe it's just uh, adding aliases to a domain user account, you know, do a self service thing or. You know, users could add aliases to their own account, something like that. You know, so it could be a really small app, or it could be some of the apps that are some of our, our larger clients are running. One of them does uh, their budget tracking for North America and handles like two billion dollars worth of assets. It's it's a gigantic app. It has like a hundred pages, and you know, and I don't know, it's it's gigantic. So yeah. you can build lar rather large things as well. I suppose the other thing for people just to keep in mind is um, AppMaker is is limited to your your domain. So uh, if you know if you're doing web app HTML service, you can publish that so that anyone can access it. Um, but with AppMaker, it's still restricted to your domain. It is, and probably one of the number one asked questions as well that I've seen is when are they going to make it just like HTML service to where you can choose, depending on your domain settings, if you can publish to the world and that kind of thing. I think it would be a big benefit. I see why Google's doing it. You know, they're wanting to keep it as an internal business tool, uh, which there's, you know, I mean, there's so much that can be done there, but there's, I, I can think of so many 
you know, businesses and things like that that could also use the ability to be able to build these lightweight apps and get their concept out there for people to interact with, you know, in this kind of a platform for a very low price, very fast. You know, I mean, you can throw up an app in an hour or two and have it out there and have people testing your concept. And that would be, I think, really valuable. But, you know, I also understand the business idea that this is built for doing things like workflows and stuff like that. Um, that doesn't mean it's just because it is, you know, basically siloed to your domain doesn't mean that that's the end of the end, end of the story. So you can ex export your project as a zip file and share it with another domain and they can load that right up and use your same app. And then if you want to basically have the same app running in both places, they can just connect to your cloud SQL database and then everybody's sharing the same data on the back end. So it acts like the same front end. So from a maintainability standpoint, that's not perfect because now yeah. you've got two separate instances running, but you can always do that, download the latest copy and upload it and update the new one kind of thing like we've done with desktop apps forever. Um, so there is, there is a, a workaround to that. Um, if you don't want to do that kind of stuff, if you want full public, you know, anonymous access, you know, as you know, with AppScript, we can just, you know, use a Google form and just write a couple lines of code to inject that form data right into your database as well. So, so there's lots of ways to, to make that, you know, get around it, I should say. Uh, one of the uh, questions that's come in is um, how, how complicated um, can you get with um, AppMaker without actually using any code? So uh, doing simple calculations on, on fields, you know, summing stuff or is there options for quickly kind of plugging things like that in or do you have to delve into the code? Yeah, we have. So one of the things I do for a lot of, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of times when we're working with the Google sales teams or things like that, when they're talking to a client and they want to get a concept out there or, you know, where we're wanting to take somebody from access to app maker and they need to upgrade to Google and we want to show them the benefit there. I'll actually build them an app or just a demo of an app. Um, I typically try to spend only around two hours uh, to build a full working demo. And most of those times I try to do it without writing any code. So I would say that in the grand scheme of most things, you can get away with probably 90% of the apps out there that you need to build in your business without writing a single line of code. I mean, other than like bindings and things where you're kind of just hooking things together, but I don't really consider that code. I mean, if, if, if you're not sitting down and writing, you know, for statements and things like that, then that's not really coding, right? Um, you know, but what always happens, of course, with any, with any kind of app is once you get it to a certain point, you're like, wow, this is amazing, this is great, but now I want it to do X, Y, and Z. And then of course you need to write a little code. Right. Um, yeah. Still, even at that, App Maker, App Maker's tricky in the in the fact that you do have to learn how the tool works, and that's why we have the boot camps and things like that. Um, you know, because there are a lot of blind alleys and things like that. The and one of the biggest problems I've seen, especially with really good app scripters, is they'll jump in there like, I know app script, I know how to create UI apps, I'm going to jump in and use that, and they hit kind of this little barrier where they're not sure how to do something, and they start writing code. Right, <laughs> and, right, and of course, right. they they do after writing a lot of code, maybe a hundred lines of code. They figure out how to how to make that all work into App Maker, and then you know we take a look at it like you know you could just use this little kind of hidden piece over here, and you know it's not even a line of code. It's just kind of configure a couple little check boxes, and boom, it does everything you just wrote all that code for. And so you know those are some secrets that we like to try to get out to people that if you're writing a lot of code at first, then you're probably going the wrong direction and you just need a little instruction on that. But yeah, you can you can do a lot without writing mm. any code. It's, it's That's great advice. Um, yeah. You mentioned yeah. that, you know, this hooks into uh, Google's Cloud SQL. Um, so, it, um, and th this is one of the things, you know, uh, with AppMaker, your domain admin needs to set up. But our, does it have to be Google Cloud SQL or can you use your own SQL database? So the binding tool, basically, basically the when you set up your data models, they all they they're right out of the box they use Cloud SQL. And it's easy. I mean, you, you what you, 
when you first start up AppMaker, your admin should go in there and create a shared SQL instance, what they call a shared SQL instance, which is just a SQL database that's running. Um, they put that in the admin control panel, and then when you use AppMaker, you're just clicking a button next next to data, and clicking a plus key and naming your table. And it's setting up, it's handling the whole back end, it's going to GCP and spinning up a new database and all that stuff for you. So from yours, from the user side, you're just naming the table and you're creating your fields. And so it's all managed in AppMaker. You don't have to go off to cloud to the cloud platform or learn any of that stuff or try to configure gateways or none of that. It's just, it's just you just use it. Um, and so that's great. So I tell people, it's like, well, why wouldn't you want to use mm -hmm. a Cloud SQL database? It's got all the backups. It's all there. It's It's got great robust tools. You can get a desktop client to collect, connect to your SQL database if you want to. Um, so it's all ready to go. But if you do want to use something else, I haven't seen anything that is you know directly integrated. Now, we've got a bunch of different templates and things where we've connected to things like BigQuery or spreadsheets or um, Salesforce or Asana, you know, those kinds of um, services using an API. But we have to write some middleware there so that you can, you know, do a put and you know, you know, add records and things like that. So you do have to write code to do that. I mean, we do have a bunch of great templates, things like that. But um, yeah, so if you want to write the code, sure, you can connect anything <laughs> with API accessible to it. You know, <laughs> you name it. In terms of um, this, is a question I've seen up come up in the 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 edu communities is um, how, how much are you seeing the cost of your say running um, app just app maker with with Cloud SQL to not using any other um google cloud bits and pieces that you can what's kind of the, the monthly billing on that you see it's it's true I, I i get asked that question all the time and we literally have hundreds of sql um, databases running right now for for different clients and things like that and so when i look over them kind of in a, as an average so when we set them up we set them up on the lowest setting you know the, the developer setting because yeah. we a lot of it's just for testing and that kind of thing. And on that setting, the average is like around between 10 and $15, you know, a month. So it's not really expensive to use it. And, and if you're new, you get a bunch of GCP credits when you first set up your, your, your domain. So you get like $200 worth of those. So, I mean, you can quite literally make it at least through the first year with the, without paying a dime. So that's kind of cool. Um, now, when you go to production with a bigger database and that kind of thing, even our really large databases that we kind of crank them up to like level three, I think is about where they're at. I think it goes to five. So about the middle middle ground there, they get a little bit more expensive. They're around $80 a month, right. uh, which is still, I mean, you're getting you know tons of cores and massive amounts of RAM and endless storage space and things like that. And these are these are big databases. They're storing literally millions of records. So, you know, that's still not terribly expensive in the grand scheme of things. So if you've got that much data in and out, I imagine it's probably a pretty important business function. So $80 a month for all the security and that kind of thing, I, I think it's worth it. Uh, well, I'll, I'll feed back. back. I think it's always going to be an issue for the schools, particularly um, they just don't have money for anything, which is um, why I've, I've uh, encouraged them onto G Suite and G Suite products in the past because on Edu it's free. So hopefully Google will come up with something that um, lowers uh, that that barrier for for uh, those with working on zero budgets. Um, so. Um, so I, I've got Sorry. some something to add to that. So, and we're not working. Uh, we're actually looking for um, EDU specific Google partners there in the in the EU, um, across the, across the ocean from us. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we're working here a lot with Amplified IT in the U.S. And you know, one of the things I know they offer or they're able to get for some of their ED some of their EDU clients is they can get special credits. Um, and so, you know, if you if you're working through a partner like that, 
Um, and we're we're definitely looking for some partners over there that we can also help out in that kind of a situation. So, you know, or at least Ignite Synergy, our businesses, and then through AppMaker University. Um, you know, we may be able to find those EDU credits from Google um, so that people can get started using it. Um, so so if, if you're worried your school doesn't have any money and you can't do that, then, you know, try to get a hold of us because there's probably a partner we can work with that's got some vouchers somewhere that we can yeah. let get you get you using the tool. Cool. Um, so got quite a few questions coming in from the YouTube chat. So um, some of these are going into uh, quite specific things. So before we do that, perhaps I'll just um, take one of the, uh, the other questions here. There's quite a few people are interested in AppMaker, but um, they're, they're, you know, they're trying to find basically the starting point. So, uh, for example, as a non-coder recommended starting point and resources, um, uh, but in fact, let's just take that one there. Cause obviously I, I know you've, you've done a lot of work in this area. So, uh, good starting point, some training material for, uh, a maker of wannabe developers. Definitely, definitely. Well, two years ago, when I when I looked at this product, I, I went out to Google, got into that you know first group of people to ever see it kind of thing. Uh, you know, I, I looked at them like this thing is awesome, but they were still having you know even though with all the coding experience I had, they were still having to like walk me through and tell me what things were and how it worked. And I was like, man, this thing is awesome, but you, somebody's going to need to to do some kind of intro, you know instruction about how to use the tool, set it up properly, you know, basically get off on the right foot and understand how to build an app in it. And so for the last two years, we've been, so we've been providing boot camps, what we call boot camp, which is, that's through appmakeruniversity.com, is, um, you know, the boot camp takes you through all the things you need to know about how to run the tool, how to build an app, and that kind of thing. We um, hired a couple instructors here in the last six months uh, uh, I'm sorry, not uh, teachers, actual teachers, certified teachers in teaching in the industry, one of them for 30 years, um, to really refine the boot camp and make it better and better. And so the latest iteration is coming out at the end of July. And it'll be, um, we've got actually an update to our instructor led boot camp. So we've got it instructor led. If you need somebody to be there in person, uh, not necessarily in person, we do it over Hangouts like we're doing now. Um, where you can go through and have an instructor teach you all the different pieces. Um, or we have a new video bootcamp coming out that's self-paced e-learning platform. You can get on there and you know go through each module and it takes you step by step through it. And the idea is what we've done is we've taken all the all the you know, wrong steps of making apps that we've made, you know, and all the mistakes and going down and doing it all completely wrong and finding out there was a super simple way to do it and those kinds of things and just distilled it all down into one, you know, single boot camp that you go through. It's um, it's going to be uh, six modules long and you go through it and it teaches you basically everything you know, front to back, how to build an app. So we build an app during it. And it's teaching you all the parts of App Maker and how it works and how it all goes together. And and from there, what we're doing is once you've taken that, you've got a really solid base. You can be building apps, doing quite well in your organization just off the boot. Um, from there, what you can do next is we have a series of new modules coming out as part of this new bootcamp that will be advanced tasks. So there will be separate modules. They're not going to be numbered like the first set is. But they'll be like, if you want to use Salesforce, you want to do advanced queries in Cloud SQL, then, it'll, then you can take those individual classes as different pieces. And so we're going to have a whole system in, in place like that. So that's all coming out at the end of this month. It's all I'm really excited because it's almost done right now. So I'm looking at it all. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get it out there. Um, so uh, I mean, we do, of course, have our current boot camp going on right now. Um, so really just want to jump in this month and get started. We've got that right in progress to keep the classes. I think they've got two classes going right now. Um, so that's definitely the fastest way to learn this. Um, I mean, seriously, it's a week or so of classes and you're like, you're making really great apps. I mean, it's, it's crazy how fast people pick this up. And again, most of the time, almost no coding. 
Uh, the boot camp has very little coding in it just because it's, it's not needed. If you want to take that next step, step then we're going to do advanced classes and then you can learn how to app script code. So, um, I, 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 is, is there a cost to these boot camps? Or are you, can you say, or is it you, you discover on the on the Yeah, so the, the, the best way to figure out the cost is just, you know, go to appmakeruniversity.com. There's a little calculator, because it depends on students. Um, mm -hmm. like if we can pack a bunch of students in the class, then, then the cost goes way down, because the cost of the instructor is less. So. You know, so the more people we get into classes, the lower the price for everybody. So it's, it's really great. So you can see kind of how those there's little cost calculator and stuff there on that piece. Um, the uh, also right now, if you sign up for the video boot camp that's coming out at the end of the month, there's a 20. I know right now there's a 20 percent off discount code for that. So there's a little form you can fill out on the website and um, get your get your 20 percent off coupon before because once it releases at the end of the month, then we're you know, you won't get the you won't get the coupon anymore. So it's just kind of that pre-interest, you know, benefit. Uh, kind of uh, leading on to that. So um, uh, Barry Roberts um, has has asked. So he's no experience with working with databases apart from some knowledge of SQL. Um, where can he find out databases with that Maker, in particular with Google Cloud Platform? Um, so I guess in AppMaker University is is one. Um, <laughs> Definitely. Um, I, there's quite a bit of material in the Google AppMaker developer site as well. So I was looking through. Um, there's various um, kind of tutorials and examples and uh, code labs. I suppose we're at the stage where you know there's still a lot of material um, being developed, and I suppose it's there's a lot of generic material out there around, you know, working with Google Cloud Platform. Uh, any yeah, particular so resources you've come across? The, the different places I'd look. So, and I know like Code School and some of those other places have really good, you know, database like SQL, MySQL database um, type of tools. Um, AppMaker is kind of nice in, in the fact that it manages the database stuff for you in a lot of ways. So it kind of fuscates all of the, the really hard stuff. So like making a relationship and, you know, in when you're having to actually write the SQL queries to do that can be a little bit tricky. But in AppMaker, it's kind of it's got its own UI that makes it really straightforward to create those relationships and do that stuff. So that's easy. Model security. You know, events that happen. If so, if, if there's a save operation to the database, then you can just put in what you want to have happen, and and so you don't have to learn how to how to basically write all that SQL code, so to speak, to mm -hmm. do all that stuff. It's kind of handled just in a in a visual UI in AppMaker, so that makes it really nice. It simplifies the whole process, so you don't need to know as much. Of course, there is. There's just the information. There's the information that we provide, and then of course there's the AppMaker website. And that's the only place in the world you're going to find out about those things because <laughs> it's very specific. Um, but diving down a little bit deeper, um, something that, you know, as your apps become more and more sophisticated, you'll be writing calculated SQL models, which if, you, if you're familiar with the SQL language, that's basically a view of the data. And so you can write very, uh, really sophisticated ones. You can inject variables. You can do all that kind of stuff. Um, within a calculated SQL model in AppMaker. So it becomes very, very powerful in that respect. But at, at that point, you have to learn how to write SQL queries. And so that's why I recommend, you know, if you really want to get into that level of detail, then, you know, pick up a class on MySQL programming, and that'll take you a long ways. Yeah. Um, besides the uh, Cloud SQL integration, uh, has AppMaker got integration with other uh, Google products and services? So, in particular, Carl uh, Mason was asking about support for Cloud Functions. So, it works basically just like AppScript works. So, on the server side, you can use HTML, sir, um, the, um, sorry, uh, the URL fetch service to you know, connect to basically any of those things. Um, all the advanced Google services are built in just like they are in AppScript. So, you just enable the service. And you're able to use it that way, so it's it's very 
very similar in that respect. So you're using the app script back in. So those kinds of server side connections are all made through that same service. That we, and the nice thing about that is there's a lot of information. You go to stack on that stuff and, and you can find a lot of information out there yeah. you know, on app script connections and things like that. So Carl uh, has another question in here. Uh, most apps are designed with offline first in mind. Does that make our support this? So there's obviously a lot of really cool technologies around browser technology that can support, you know, things like service workers and so on that can support um, progressive web apps. It, has AppMaker got any of these enabled? It, uh, it doesn't. Um, at least, yeah, no, nothing that I know of. Um, and this would really be not so much on the app maker side of it, uh, you know, because app maker is basically the tool that builds the the app script, you know, the app script HTML function that's running there. It's running completely on app script. So from a UI perspective, so I would think that we'd probably be following more closely what app script is doing in that respect, um, as far as bringing out any kind of offline functions. It would be more of a function of app script than the app maker. AEA design, I, I missed his question, so he's quite keen to get answered. So uh, I, I'll jump into that one. So um, let me see. So can we link to a folder on Team Drive to record within an app, e.g. if we put together an app for a project record for record keeping, can we have the relevant folder on Drive show up? To access relevant files, so I guess this is a bit like uh, the the picker. Um, is there a picker equivalent in App Maker? It actually has Drive Picker built into App Maker. It's it's one of the widgets, so you can use it directly there. Um, you know, of course, there's been some you know difficulty with Team Drive and App Script in general. So of course those same kinds of issues flow over into mm -hmm. AppMaker, being that it's on the same platform. But aside from those kind of specific um, problems, the the rest of it works great. So Drive Picker is incredibly easy to use. You just drag the widget out onto the screen, and you know you can decide if you want to you know put the the picked file results into that or send it to the server or whatever you want to do there. But it's there's nothing else to configure. It's it's just it just works, no no code or anything. I, I suppose the other thing for people to remember is whilst AppMaker is designed to remove a lot of the coding that you need to do, if you do need to, you know, delve in and and do something specific that isn't a feature built in within AppMaker, you can you can code it in that script. So you know, um, whilst people probably want to take serious consideration before just dumping all their existing app script project code into app maker. Um, if you do hit a, a blockage in terms of what you're trying to achieve in, in that app maker, if you can achieve it in app scripts, you, you can achieve it in app maker. Yeah, the, the server side stuff, you can just stuff right in the server side file and it, it works just like you would expect it to work in, in app script. It's, it, it's identical. So there's no, no issues with, so all your GS files, no issues with those at all. Um, AppMaker's pretty open on the client side as well. Even though you've got all this fanciness with the drag and drops and stuff like that, you could throw a, just a regular HTML panel up there and mm. fill it full of whatever you want. You know, we have a couple integrations where we've done things like add a jQuery so we can use like drag and drop features, uh, stuff like that, and just attach those drag and drop features to AppMaker panels so that you, you know, you can use the AppMaker components, but, you know, add on, you know, a, a, a you know, famous library like jQuery onto that and do things that AppMaker can't do. So, mm. um, and it, AppMaker doesn't care how you can do as much of that as you want. <laughs> you know, it, it's not, it's not a, you know, like, like say a product like QuickBase or something like that, where it's like, you know, you get a button and yeah, you can change the color and the text, but that's about it. You know, anything mm -hmm. else you're, you're kind of getting outside of the scope of what the program can do. Um, AppMaker is not like that. You, you can, you can add all the custom HTML, CSS and JavaScript you want, and it's not going to complain at all. It's, it's going to do whatever you force it to do. And I, I suppose another question it 
you've talked about how you can you know import different you know jQuery and things you know be the CSS. Um, are you finding you're having to do much of that when you're doing development work? For example, um, I think we covered this when you um, came on the show last time that you know you can set that maker up to be mobile friendly. So I suppose that's going to be a question a lot of people ask. You know, um, doing much much less as the as the time goes by uh, for two reasons. One, we're learning a lot more about kind of all of the little hidden gems in AppMaker and how you can do things. Um, I've discovered a couple of things just even lately that are come out. Uh, the other, because of the other thing that's going on is the AppMaker team's really listening to the forums. You know, they're looking at how people are using the, the product. They're taking a lot of feedback and they're incorporating a lot of that stuff into the product. And so, you know, you, you know, while it looks pretty much the same and it's organized pretty much the same as it was, you know, two years ago when it came out, there's a lot that's gone into the functionality of it and how it actually does things. And, and a lot of the, you know, things that weren't there to begin with are now there and it just, it's made it a pretty amazing product. So I'm, I'm using jQuery libraries and things like that less and less. They, they're, they're for specific topics and things like that. But, um, you know, we're finding that there's app maker-ish ways to do things instead of having to import one of those libraries. Um, you know, so it's, it's definitely, it, it's gotten better in that respect. Um, you to answer your question. Oh. Sorry, on you go. I was going to say to answer your question on the responsive part. So the second module we do in our boot camps is all about responsive because we're like, you should start off with a good solid base and there's a trick to it. There's a, there's a tricky way to do it in AppMaker. It's actually very easy to set up um, to, to actually get it to work. And once you've got it set up, you can just model all your pages off of the same template. Uh, there's even just a way to just, create a page that says template and just duplicate it and then start using the duplicate as your page. Uh, so all your pages look the same, but once you kind of master that certain set of arranging the widgets in a certain way, there's no CSS, there's no code, there's nothing else, and it responds beautifully to mobile. So once you learn the technique, it's it's dead simple. You know, it's great. I think in fact, my, my memory is we touched upon that in our session, so people are keen, they should go back to the previous episode we did with you, James, and um, they can perhaps pick that mm. one out. Could be. <laughs> um, so uh, you mentioned there that uh, the AppMaker team, you know, they're keen for feedback from the community. Um, is there a, a particular forum? So um, Barry Roberts um, mentions that there's a, an AppMaker user group, Google group, is is that the main? There's place? a there's a Google group and there's Stack and let's see I don't remember which links get you to which ones, mm -hmm. but in App Maker there's the file menu and then down at the bottom there's a support section and it has questions and it has form. Oh, also I guess the form probably goes to the Google form. And I think the questions actually, yeah, the questions goes to Stack Overflow. So, right. Right. Uh, so those are two places that um, you can ask. I know Googlers are staffing both of those places. Um, the community is growing quite a bit. I answer a lot of questions on there as well. So um, I typically tend to stick more to the form. Um, mm -hmm. I do Stack, uh, Stack Overflow, but both places are you know good places to ask those questions uh, if you want to you know directly ask them to Googlers. Well, um, in the show notes for this, we'll we'll include links. Um, for various bits and pieces to, to the App Maker University and uh, some of the other support sites. Um, so you can jump in those and um, uh, ask any questions. So um, I think we've kind of, um, uh, we've come to the end of the questions, but I think I feel there, there may be a, a follow up episodes <laughs> in that maker there seems to be a lot of interest in this product so i'm i'm pretty sure we'll be asking james back again or if, if not someone else from the team who's um um uh, working in uh with that maker um but um but uh yeah so thank you for your your time james and um 
uh, hopefully we'll we'll see a nice boost <laughs> in the, the forum numbers of people joining in and um, uh, learning more about um, Google App Maker. Definitely. Sounds great. Thanks for having us on. <laughs> okay, folks. So um, this this is the rebirth of Totally Unscripted, so uh, season two. So um, stay tuned. There will be more stuff. So uh, both James and myself are at Google Cloud Next um, later in the month, towards the end of July. So um, uh, we'll no doubt have a, a Totally Unscripted episode after that just to pick out, the, I've been through the program, there's quite a few sessions on uh, Google Apps Script and Google App Maker, which is um, always nice to see. So hopefully there'll be uh, plenty for us to uh, turn over and discuss at uh, a later date. But again, James, thank you for your time and um, no doubt we'll uh, see you soon again. Thanks.